In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. His disciple asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And Jesus said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayers and fasting. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, all earthly desires, sins, and evilness cannot be driven out with anything but prayers and fasting. This is the prescriptions God prescribed to us more than 2,000 years ago that worked back then and still works now and will work forever. Its validity is proven evident over and over again throughout the history of the church by virtues of living examples. Today, the church celebrates one of these living examples, a victorious warrior of the name of St. John Climacus. This example was set forth for us to be reminded of our purpose in this life. St. John's greatest achievement is nothing but his experience in prayer and fasting put in a book called The Ladder of Divine Ascent. As a response to another abbot request for spiritual direction. So who was St. John? He was a monk in a St. Catherine in Sinai of Egypt an abbot of his own right. His spiritual wisdom was recognized by so many that he had to document it in the book that called The Ladder of Divine Ascent. After being originally written for the monks of his monastery, The Ladder of Divine Essence quickly became one of the most widely read and loved book of the Orthodox and Christian spirituality, especially during the great land that we are in the middle of. The latter talks about how to raise one's soul and body to God through their virtues. St. John uses the latter as an analogy for his spiritual teaching. Each chapter is one step and focuses on a separate spiritual topic. The latter is made of 30 steps correlating to Jesus' life Jesus' age as his baptism and the beginning of his ministry. Within the ladder, the book can be divided into following segment. First segment, step one to four, which include the renunciation of the world and obedience of the spiritual father. It teaches us to detach ourselves from this life and start the pilgrimage to heaven. Second segment, Steps five to seven, penance and affliction as path to true joy. Some of these virtues are true repentance, remembrance of death, joy-making mourning of our sins. The third segment, step eight to 17, teaches us how to gain self-control over sins and desires by defeating evilness and gaining true virtues freedom from anger, remembrance of wrongdoing, slander, importance of silence. It talks about lying, dependency on God, stomach control, chastity, love for money, and others. Fourth segment, segment 18 to 26, it teaches us how to avoid devil's trap as aesthetics prides, mental strategies, and what have you. Turning deaf ear to evilness and sleep and to go and resume to prayers. Fifth segment, step 27 to 29, concern higher virtues. That's the disciples life aims for, our life should aim for. On holy stillness of body and soul, on holy prayers, the mother of all virtues, and on a living God-like on earth. So we can end up fully immersed with true love that is complete union with God, and that is the sixth segment, which is made of one step and one step only, love. Love that requires all other virtues and chapters and steps to be completed and mastered before 
achieving love. The media nowadays make us or make love sound so easy to acquire. Love has become a cheap product offered to us everywhere. Internet, school, book, TV, what have you. Ignoring the fact that love is the hardest to acquire since God is love. According to the book, The Ladder of Divine Essence, reaching the top of the stairs and mastering the final step, love, true love, can only be ensured and completed through fulfilling all the other 29 steps. So we can become gods by God's grace, as St. Athanasius the Great once proclaimed. Yesterday, the church celebrated the Holy Feast of the Annunciation. Its icon is depicted right above the iconostas. It shows how Angel Gabriel delivered the good news to a virgin and how she will deliver to the world, to us, Jesus, the source of our salvation, who is going to save his people from sin. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Save us from sins and from being captured by sins by removing the sin's roots from our hearts by fulfilling it with virtues, making it clean to Christ so he can dwell with us and so we can continue our journey of purification and unification with him. Earthly morals are different from spiritual virtues, the Holy Father teaches. Since the first, the morals prepare us to become good citizens, good people on earth, which is great, by teaching us how to become a good citizen and deal fairly and equally with other citizens. The virtues, on the other hand, open paradise in our hearts and make God dwell in us, converting us to God's by his grace, teaching us how to behave in the presence of heavenly powers, angels, saints, and God himself. Such virtues take us step by step through the ladder of divine essence. Acquiring spiritual virtues like these prescribed in the book is so essential, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, since these became tunnel, allow us to gain the Holy Spirit for holiness and purification from sins that helps cleanse us from inside and out so we can taste eternal life while still living right here on earth. Spiritual life is like a journey. Once you arrive to the airport on a trip to a far destination, the first step is to call Uber or taxi, right? Once you are seated, the first thing you do is put the seatbelt. Why? For pure protection. Well, the seatbelts in our life as journeying toward heaven is the gospel. Then you tell the driver where you want to go, right? For us, Orthodox Christian, we want to go to heaven. That's our desire. This is our final destination. So the driver, who is a spiritual father, start the car and drive through the valleys of shadows of death, as said in Psalm 23, 4. Maneuvering through tribulation and spiritual hardship utilizing his expertise and the experience of whoever ran the course before him and documented their journey's experience in books like the one we have right here. The Holy Father's writing are these spiritual maps, or if you may, the GPS. If followed correctly, will allow the driver, the spiritual father, to make sure that we arrive to our destination fast and safe. The ladder of divine essence in, is one of your spiritual GPS that gives a spiritual experience of great holy fathers of the church, St. John Climacus. So let us, dear brothers and sisters, start getting ready for such a journey if we have not already done so by acquiring such a spiritual book or similar ones, reading such holy books allow us to start the journey, moving up the ladders and focusing at the ultimate goal that is God, which 
arrive to once we reach the top of the ladder and make us able to free ourselves from all that binds us to earthly evilness and desire. So what is the, our, our overall plan as a Christian? The first, we must establish a goal. We must have a desire destination that is heaven. Our goal as a Christian is the unification of Christ himself. The second step, develop a plan that take us safely to our final destination. Step by step, the plan is to live the life of the church, the Holy Fathers and their wisdoms. By entering the church very baptism, which we all have, acquiring the gift of the Holy Spirit by chrismation, taking continuous support from weekly participation of the Holy Eucharist, and in this blessed time, twice a week, often re-evaluate one's spiritual growth through confession. To work the plan through, to get closer to, closer to God, for that we must start that plan by fasting and praying first. We need to cleanse our body and our soul, clean it, so God can come back and, uh, you know, live with us. The only way to, cl to clean our heart from evilness is by fasting and praying. Finally, we must try to eliminate and destroy all obstacle on the way. And to eliminate such obstacle, we need to prepare our arsenals of virtues as prescribed by St. John in his book, a book that can be the perfect example and tool that show us how to do so. I pray as we are getting closer and closer to the day when Christ rises in our heart and in, our, in the middle of our families. I pray that we develop such a plan and execute it by asking God grace and help for every step on the way so we can all with sincerity of heart be witness to Christ's resurrection and before that witness to Christ's rising of Lazarus from the tomb that's coming up very shortly so we can proclaim all together in one voice that Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and upon those in the tomb bestowing life. Amen.